I'll be honest, like, you could close my stream. It's not, like, a, you, I think that most of the time we're having, like, a good stream. It's usually entertaining. Sometimes it goes off the rails, but, like, you don't have to watch that shit live. You could catch it on rerun. Plus, on rerun, they fill that shit with mid-rolls, so I think, like, it's, it's better for my bottom line. So, yes, please. I don't have any control over that. It's called ADD. The stimulation is relaxing. All right, well, you know, don't let me walk into a minefield of mental health concerns that I'm unqualified to talk about at all. I do want... So, like, every night I have to um, make thumbnails, set YouTube videos, etc., etc. Probably, I would say, on average, it gives about an hour of, of work a night. Uh, just to, just in maintenance, which is fine. I would also say, on average, I spend 15 minutes trying to find the perfect thing to put on my other monitor so that I feel like I can start getting that mindless work done, but I immediately tune out whatever the heck it is. It's like I spend... It's the most wasted time that's ever existed. I'm spending mindful energy finding the perfect thing to not watch but i can't i don't feel like i can do the work unless i have the perfect thing on it's crazy that's all it's relatable the most relatable streamer <laughs> I like the sound of that. The most relatable streamer, huh? I hate the squad, but it does look primed for potential jelly. She don't use cockroach. She don't use moths. She don't use scampi or any of those she uses. So, line, line. Let's just say tangerines. It, it works. And then you go, Bang. she uses that. Okay, yeah. She uses scampi. I know a girl who has a level two bear. She's always overriding whatever food was there. She don't like garlic. She don't like cheese. She don't like lemon or any of these. She uses scampi. Honey also works. It even makes more sense. Sorry. What the hell is this? It's early flaming lips. Boomer. <laughs> Sorry. Giraffe! It did sound Blink-esque? What the hell is Blink-esque? What am I doing? This is okay. This is okay. Oh, Blink-182? No, that's... I fell in love with a girl at the cock show. She said what? And I told her that I didn't know. I already tell you about people keep asking me how I feel about Blink-182 reuniting and I never realized they actually broke up. What's the cock show? <laughs> Get a load of this guy. He doesn't know what the cock show is. <laughs> oh man, nobody tell him. Nobody tell him. Oh, man. You must not have had that much fun in high school. <laughs> oh, man. Blink-182 did separate? Bro, that's why you gotta mix it up every once in a while and keep it in the fridge. Okay, I mean, you gotta go for, like, this purpose. Question marks? It's a joke about natural peanut butter. <laughs> 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 
You didn't pick up on that? It's a reference to the phenomenon of natural peanut butter. Come on. Think about it. Got it? What are you talking about? I don't know. So, um, is anybody else... I don't want to go off on a rant here. Does anyone else see or think that the medium is the message? What the? What did that loser mean when he said that? Every, so many people say that. The medium is the message. What does it mean, Basil? Thank you. This is actually... This could save me. What does that mean? We don't just say things. What does it mean? It means the medium is the message? Well, when you put it that way. What does it mean? No, the message is not the medium. If I send you an email, it's not a television. He doesn't know. Nobody tell him. Oh, no. Is this something you could learn at the cock show? I think he, honestly, I think Marshall McLuhan, he was just, like, saying stuff. And then, like, he said the medium is the message. And a bunch of people went, whoa. And he was like, run with it, brother. I could build a whole career on this. Man went to the grave. With the deepest secret of his most famous quote is inherently meaningless. It means the medium is the message. <laughs> what is he saying? Like all TV is movies? I, I just don't understand. <laughs> all TV is movies? We're on lethal? I thought this run was kind of solid with it. Le level three jellyfish! The medium is the message! Level three jellyfish! Why don't you leave and you stay? I actually think we're going to six again. I don't think we're going to ten, but I think a level three jellyfish means we're going to six. Unless our mosquito gets immediately shot. Never mind, never mind. We're goaded, we're goaded. Roll me. Roll me. Lemon me. Roll me. Sell me. Toad me. I get it now. The medium is the message. It's like it doesn't matter what's in the shop. It's just that the shop's existence is what is the thing that, from which we derive the meaning of the message, which is the shop, such as. People are not. People are not. People are not. Okay, there's six. Time to lose. I told you. I told you we could get the six, Barry. What the... Yo, look at this. Whoa, it's like she's trying to get me onto the dance floor and I'm reluctant to go. But then we're at the part of the movie where it's a meet cute. So I'm like, okay, fine. And then it turns out I'm really good at dancing. And then at the end, she goes like, where did you learn that? Oh, I did five years of hip hop dancing in middle school. And then they, it's like maybe like a James Marsden, Catherine Heigl sort of joint. She do be reeling in the year. She hooked me. Look at that. She hooked me. Oh, oh. Oh, man. So, oh, you're going to take the hook out? You're just going to leave me here? It's a, it's a good bit. <laughs> oh, man. The medium is the motherfucking message. That is damn true, dude. Your everlasting summer, you could. Your everlasting sea bass, you can see it reeling fast. So you grab a piece of swordfish that you think is gonna last. 
You wouldn't know a small mouth bass if you held it in your hands. The things that pass for soul, I don't understand. Are you reeling in the fish? Catching all of the fish? Are you gathering up the fish? Have you had enough of mine? Took it the tongue the tongue. Oh man. Dagadung down, they got on down, they got digga 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 da down down, they got down, they got digga 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 da down now. Oh man. What a song. Songs to fish to. My my favorite mixtape from my five years of middle school. Your singing is like Ringo's art. What the hell? Someone put my singing on the damn blockchain? I've been funged? I think a camel can work this week. Jerry. Jerry, they funged my token. Shame. I thought that... This is Kramer voice. I thought that thing was non-fungible. It's supposed to be non-fungible. They funged it. I gotta make some calls. Giggity. Giddy up. That's it. Hold on. This team's good. God, I would kill for a flawless, man. <laughs> It's been, it's been 84 years. They're Jerry, they're the three stooges. They're not making any more of them. It's a sure thing. Carly, Larry, Mo. You gotta have watched like the whole week this week to understand what we're, we're talking about. <laughs> this, is, this we've, I don't know what to say. It's fun though. It's a fun time. You've got the perfect register to sing Frank Sinatra. I love also telling people lies on stream to get them to embarrass themselves. And then regrets. I've had a few. But then again, to view dimension. I just believe in this little guy this week. I don't really believe in you, though. It's a big pivot. It's a dangerous pivot. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You have a perfect register to sing Under the Sea? Hey, that's actually true, though. The seaweed is always greener than some of the ups late. Oh, there goes the flawless. We still got a good chance, though. When you stream, do you picture all 8,000 of us packed into an auditorium? No, I always love when streamers say stuff like that. They're like, hey, you know, if you get down on yourself, you only have uh, 500 viewers. Just imagine, that's like a mid-sized auditorium. I'm like, brother, whatever you need to tell yourself is great, don't get me wrong. But if you, if to watch the stream, you had to, let's not even talk about buying a ticket. If you had to drive and park and then deal with being in a crowd fucking there'd be like six people max max right now i'm not picturing a stadium here's what i'm picturing is like maybe there's like a free carnival or something in like a park in a city so people that happen to be like walking by they're like already on their way are like whoa there's some tents set up in that park let's go check it out and then they go you know oh no they're trying to Get me to convert the, the Hare Krishna faith, and then you maybe get like, a, I don't know, like some uh, Palak Paneer and then leave. That's pretty much the vibe that we got going on. It's not it's like a stadium. It's like, uh, you know, it's just a thing that happens to be going on that has like an insanely low barrier to entry.
Do I want a shot plus two IRL? I don't know about that. I'm not. It's just, I don't know if I can handle that, quite frankly. I'm not sure I'm cut out for all that, honestly. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to leave. Hold on. With the three drink minimum, though? Oh, man. People will be going off. I did get a message from someone yesterday. From my FB friends. Sorry, that's from the classic video. Um, who that say going to beat them Saints? Where the guy bet that the Saints would beat another team and they... Or he bet the Saints wouldn't beat another team. And then when the Saints did, they all shot his big screen TV on his front yard. Anyway, sorry. I forgot what... <laughs> Got what I was talking about. But the message was about yesterday's stream where we talked about how all laws about alcohol are just lies. Particularly, you're not allowed to serve somebody that's openly intoxicated. We want to do this. They said, you can't make that law. You can't actually enforce that law because drunk people give me my best tips. And I was like, you know what? They got a point. But I do, I, I bet that there is like a, with very drunk people, I bet it's like a plus 10% bonus to your average tip. But then on top of that, there is like a 5% chance that they just run out of the bar without paying their tab. I think you got, you got a little, look, there's always a trade-off, you know? In good game design, there's always a trade-off. That's why they take your card. Oh yeah, they don't really do that here. I only see that happen in the, well, of, of the places I go to, which is not many. I only see that happen in America, where you go to the bar and order a drink and they're like, give me a piece of your ID and a credit card. In Vancouver, it just takes a really long time because you pay for every drink at the point of sale machine as you get it. So the throughput is like incredibly slow. <laughs> Wait, we got six wins already, and we have seven life remaining. This is insane. We're we're going pog crazy. I would I would replace. I would replace. Give me a quick salad. No zebra. No zebra on the salad. Let's go. It might be a thing outside of America. I don't create a tab at too many places at this stage of my life. That's only if, you know, if you're blowing it out. So close. Sure. Sure. And you're going to get sold soon. Don't question it. First, we're going to give you one of those, though. I don't know how it works. Is this one of the, me walking into every establishment? Hey, before I order some food, I have some questions for you. Is this one of those places where you pay at the, do we order at the front or do we sit down? Do we order, do we walk up and tell you, do you run us down like a line of the order and then you give us a tray with our food and then we find a table or do we find a table and you guys have someone that like comes around and takes your order? And, and do we bus our own tables? Is there like a bin we put our, our, our cutlery and stuff into or is it a, do you, uh, do you come around and do that for us? And do we leave a tip on the table or is it... Uh, I'm not going to stall out at six. We're, go we're going for seven minimum. Minimum. I don't like those, those, those trendy new restaurants where you, you have to, you know, bust your own table. <laughs> Never know how to order at them. It's just they're, they're so cool with their, like, uh, opaque ordering systems and their, their point-of-sale machines, and they don't have the, the, the huge uh, 1980 cell phone interact machine they bring around to your table anymore. They all got these cool screens they flip around. And then they're like, is an emailed receipt okay? And I'm like, no. And they're like, paper receipt? And I'm like, no, no receipt at all, please. And it's a whole th And then they're like, please don't come back here. And it's a... Uh, I've made a lot of enemies in this town. Can we get to eight? Can we get to eight? 
Nope. <laughs> no, uh, nope. Oh, wait. Yes, we can. Eight wins. Yes, it does. I think that's the sauce. Secret or otherwise. You know what? I don't want you to get sniped. I would say we got a limited shot of getting to um, nine. That's for sure. But limited, that don't mean zero. <laughs> I really thought we had a chance. Okay, that's eight. That's still like one of my best. I mean, can I show you something? History. Replays. I know you only see 10, but like, look at this shit. Just wait a second, okay? He's got to ping a server. Eight, six, six, eight, four, six, seven, five, six, six. I'm telling you, and it just keeps going. It doesn't, like, it's just six, five, seven, four. Well, there's not many fours. It's all, like, five to seven. It's horrible. Like, I, I would just like to hit the occasional home run, you know? Like, I got too much fucking Chuck Knobloch and not enough fucking uh, Aaron Judge, you know? And roll, please. I know baseball. If there's two things I know, I know baseball. Hey, let me be a nasty knight. You hearing that? What is this team? What is this team? I'm more of a Tony Gwynn guy. Ah, yes. The San Diego Padres. The Gwynn Man. Gwynn Lord of Cinder. I remember his nickname was. That's what we used to call him back in the day. Mr. 2835. They don't make him like that anymore, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to get six this time. I feel like we might get zero. <laughs> I'm just, uh, my head's a little, I'm swimming right now. Thinking about that sandwich, man. Didn't get olive bread this time. Thought I'd mix it up. I got some rosemary and olive oil bread. And I got to tell you, pretty good, man. It's pretty good. Can I tell you my baby played a prank on me yesterday? I've been trying to get her to eat more vegetables, right? So I bought some hummus. I bought some celery, I bought some baby carrots. Um, made her a nice crudite in honor of the Pennsylvania election yesterday. She wouldn't eat any of it. She said, I don't want this, I don't want this, and I don't want this. She pointed at everything, the hummus, the celery, and the cucumber, She's, or the, and the carrots. She said, I don't want any of this. I said, okay, I took it away, I gave her some, some bread, and some hummus. She said, I don't want this. Pointed to the hummus and just ate the bread. Listen, you get you, whatever you can get, you take at this stage of the picky eating. Then when I was putting her to sleep last night, she said, Daddy, I like hummus. It's like, really? Tell me that I wasn't uh, hunched over the sink with like a rubber plate with celery on it going blah, 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 blah. Eating, I mean, I loved it. Don't get me wrong. But she, like, pranked me for no reason. Did you call her a POS to her face? Are you crazy? No, I called her a POS behind her back. I'm a parent. So I'm offended you would even ask me that question. Well, I don't know. Let's go Green Beetle, man. Maybe the Green Beetle's got it. Halloween has kind of destroyed her uh, eating habits, man. She doesn't even want to, like, eat, um... She used to be okay with, like, pizza. 
or a sandwich or pasta. Now she's like, uh, the only thing she wants to eat is candy. I'll be like, do you want pasta for dinner? She says, mm, no. I say, what do you want for dinner? Mm, I want candy for dinner. You can have your candy after dinner. First, you've got to eat some additional calories on top of it. She doesn't understand. Hold on, this peacock's going insane. Maybe, maybe it's back to week, man. Maybe this week is back to week. Yeah, yeah, back to week. That makes sense. It's a recycled bit. We go through a lot of the same behavioral patterns every week, just so you know. Like, there's a... <laughs> it's an awful lot of, like, eat this please, no. Awful lot of, like, I want to... I don't want to go to bed. You have to go to bed. I don't want to go to bed. You got to go to bed. It really sounds... Me trying to get... I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody else feel like David Hasselhoff in the Broadway show Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde when you try to get your toddler to go to sleep? You must go to bed. You need to get some sleep. I don't want to sleep. I'll never go to bed. I... You, uh, What are you talking about, Jesse? You're not familiar with David Hasselhoff's in inimitable turn as both Dr. Jekyll and, get this, Mr. Hyde. In Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Spoilers. My nephew screams every night when it's time to go to bed. This mf -er knows it's time for bed. I'm telling you, man, it's... Uh, and then wouldn't you know it, like, uh, like as she gets in the crib, she tries to throw, like, a little temper tantrum. And then, like, five seconds later, she's po piling, like, all of her stuffed animals at one end of the bed and going, look, Daddy, I made a house. Like, obviously, you love going to bed. Like, it's no big deal. Why, why, are, you throwing, uh, why are you throwing a monkey wrench into it for no good reason? Hold on, by the way, we got five straight wins incoming. Don't start counting your points just yet. And... Turn eight and this is your team. Come on, man. What? What? What, you don't like my bags? Where's the dog? <laughs> Why are you wearing plastic bags on your feet? What, you don't like my bags? La di da, looky, Mr. Fancy has a garage. What do you call it, Mo? A car hole. What's your favorite Mo Sislak quote? I like, um, it's not a quote, but when he, I forget what happens, but he puts his head in the oven and he puts a sign around his neck that says, No funeral. <laughs> just a sizzling bagel. It gets me every time. Not today, old friend. Not today, old friend. And then it's, uh, it's nightmare analog today, old friend. It, today, old friend gets me every time. It's always, like, in response to some, like, you know, the Astros have traded Jose Uribe. It's like a bunch of orange star icons in the mentions. Today, old friend, it's so good. <laughs> oh, man. He's making us look like a bunch of cheapskates. Whoa, whoa, my rope came loose. That is, that's a good one, too. Oh, man. What am I talking about? I forgot. I don't know. There's a big mosquito. Why not? Thoughts on people that own iguanas? Eh, whatever. I don't know. God bless them. Got nothing 
Nothing but respect for iguana owners. Seems like a lot of work. You got to buy like a special light bulb or something, right? Oh, no. That's how it starts. You roll ten times in a row. Yeah, you gotta buy a bulb and plug it in. Man, who's got the damn time? You need like a special little glass box or something too, right? Me getting laughed out of the, aqu of the aquarium store when I go in and ask for an aquarium for my lizard and they tell me it's a terrarium and then they all go, <laughs> This guy asked for a terrarium from the aquarium store. You gotta go to the terrarium store. Uh, then they'll, I'll make them all pay. I'll make them all pay. Maybe the giraffe's the ticket this week. Don't they run insanely fast? I don't know, probably not as fast as the world's fastest human being, if I had to guess. I don't know that for certain, like don't quote me on that, but that would be my expectation. Points and laughs at iguanas. It is kind of crazy that even like an out of shape human has a lot of advantages over some animals. Like, I definitely, like, even at my least conditioned, I can jump higher than a fucking ant. Imagine being, like, an ant, and then, like, uh, somebody rolled, like, a pretzel stick at you really fast. What are you gonna do? You ain't got no knees, dude! What are you gonna, you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna get hit by the pretzel rod. Me? I'd just be like, oh, no big deal. No, oh, what's, what's your best streak of uh, jumping rope? Oh, fucking zero. Loser. Oh, but I can carry... I only weigh 0. 0.05 grams, but I can carry 0. 0.75 grams of cupcake. Okay, fucking who asked? I have a car. Dummy. Shut up. Giraffe. You know how many cupcakes I could carry in that thing? I don't know, probably like if you if I if I don't care about the icing, I could probably carry like a thousand, maybe more. I hadn't really thought about it before that exact moment, to be honest with you. I can't believe I got two more streams left this week. Holy cow. Also, you live in the literal dirt. Like honestly, know your place. Are you that insecure? You got to talk down to an ant? Well, yeah, I'd love to talk up to an ant. Unfortunately, um, they're fucking like one millimeter tall. And I'm like, I don't even know, like 176,000 millimeters tall or something. <laughs> Wait, no, that would be that would be very tall. I'm like, you know. 1,760 millimeters tall? Wait, is that right? That seems about right. Yeah, yeah. Idiot. OMG, you are the smallest loser I ever seen. While you were still pee pee in your ant colony, I was lifting Cupcakes much greater in size than you. Holy cow. Flawless? Flawless incoming? Oh, we've had a couple draws. Allegedly. Okay. I love PP in Pampers meme. It's a good meme. It's a good meme. Grown adults getting really angry is always funny. Like um, the Jonathan Marchessault uh, when he got tilted on Instagram. 
What are you talking about? Go suck on your mummy's titty. Stop wasting my time. It's just an all-timer. I didn't have a stroke. Look. Both hands above my head. I don't even have pit stains. And I'm wearing... This is wool, I think. I'm, I'm cool as a damn cucumber. Pulse check. I feel like it's like mid 70s. It actually is a little elevated. You should go speak to a physician. <laughs> it's a joke. They don't. Uh, they won't see me. One of these. Um, I don't know, why don't you just take like a green pepper and then I'll pay you a green pepper to fuck off. How does that sound? Then you take one of those. Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Stand on the chair. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stand on the chair. I'm not. And okay. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. It's sorry. It's no big deal. You have no pants on. Excuse me. I I went pants shopping on Saturday after I fell down the stairs. You think I'm not rocking the walnut doers today? Don't be ridiculous. They're not extremely dad pants. They're cool contemporary pants for a man, a young adult in his approaching the, the peak of his physical conditioning and such as. Oh, I thought we had that one. I'm wearing the gray merch shorts. Honestly, that's, I'm jealous of you. I've, I've folded those up. I put them in the, the drawer that I don't open in my closet from November until April. But then the thing is, like once May rolls around, I think I just screwed up your whole team, motherfucker. Once May rolls around, I don't open the pants drawer. So it kind of works out. Let me get some of this. Some of this. We're eight wins round 12. The shorts do go hard. I like the windbreaker too, but I was telling the, the printer. He was like, how do you like the last merch run? We were talking about it. And I said, I love the windbreaker, but I literally only got to wear it like one time this year because we had... So I'm focusing, even though I'm not doing anything. It's all the, mostly the animals. Because we had like a, a long summer. It, the summer lasted until like the third week of October. And then we had two days of autumn and then it snowed. So like I didn't, get, there was no, t I went straight from like shorts to puffy winter jacket. Please. I'm begging you. I could really use this, man. Next merch run, can you do a fleece vest? I work it for a fang company. Dude, I've been losing it at, I didn't, so I, this is two different things that are, they have some synchronicity to them that I discovered this week. I didn't know there was a Twitter account called Tech Bros Looking Dripped Out. It's so cool. And it's like all, you know, like kind of nerdy tech CEOs wearing streetwear, which is fine. But then someone that I follow posted a bunch of photos and said, like, I miss when the CEO of uh, Twitter used to look like this. And it's Jack Dorsey, and he's decked head, out, head to toe in Rick Owens. And his, he's got, like, the shoes where, like, one of the shoes is, like, a normal shoe, and then the other shoe is, like, the same shoe but, like, stretched out. So, like, one of the shoes comes up, like almost to his knee and the other one's like a sneaker and it's like it's just so fucking funny <laughs> which is fine like it's not a big like i don't really care but i'm like he's getting 
like Jack Dorsey, what are you doing on stage dressed like? I'm not saying like have some decorum. I'm just like, so I see it. I don't want to brag, okay? Sometimes we find ourselves in a Nordstrom. Sometimes we find ourselves in a Holt Renfrew. You'll see an older gentleman. He'll be dressed in like a nice suit, slacks, good shoes. He's got a little bit of, he's got a nice watch on. And he looks put together. And you're like, that's a like a 45, 50 year old man. Uh, Who's like he's he's dressing his age, and then you'll see like a a dude who's head to toe Gucci printed hat, Gucci printed tracksuit, Gucci printed shoes, and his face is like uh, he's clearly like in his sixties. And I'm like, man, I don't know. I just feel like you're kind of trying too hard. You can dress however you want, but also like I can't help but see you, and as a result, I have to judge a little bit. But I'm neither. I'm the guy in the zip-up polo in the walnut doers. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that class is for men and swag is for boys. I would love to know your thoughts on this, though, because maybe I'm, maybe I'm way off base. You do look like you wear socks and sandals. Excuse me, I'll have you know... I don't wear sandals because I'm an idiopathic toe walker. So when I wear sandals, it really makes my feet hurt after like a few minutes. So I can't go for long walks with them. So I wear shoes. I don't know. Anybody else still wearing shoes these days? The world's so fucking crazy. Nobody's even wearing shoes anymore. Everyone's like, oh, I got Birkenstocks. What the frank? wasn't asking about Hermes, brother. Can you please thank you? That's all I ask. If we lose, we lose. But I just need you to kill the damn scorpion. That's like your, your only job is to kill the scorpion. Holy cow! It's a damn ten piece, dude. I can't believe it. It finally happened. And the team looks like every other team I've ever made. <laughs> Except it as a pug. Is that the secret? Is the pug the secret? Or is the secret that when the world surprise you... The lesson you should, the world, when the, when the world surprises you, the lesson you should learn is not what happened, but that the world is surprising. So true, Daniel Kahneman, so true. Let me see if my wife is ready to stream. Hello. Are you ready to stream? And the medium is the damn message. What TF are the Daniel condiments? Honestly, I'm inclined to give you a plus two for that one. 